Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. According to the fundamental counting principle, we can count the number of ways to complete a multi-part task by just multiplying together the number of ways to complete each part of the task. However, there is a condition. This condition is called uniformity. It has to be the case that the number of ways to complete each part of the task is the same no matter which way the other parts were completed. So sometimes we have to think through very carefully how we want to divide the task into parts. Let's think about how we can count the number of three digit numbers in our base 10 number system that we use every day. One way to do that would be to realize that if we were to list out all the numbers from 1 to 999, that the first 99 numbers would not have three digits in them. But then after that, the rest would, from 100 to 999. Since there are a total of 999 numbers in this list, we could subtract the ones we're not using, the first 99 numbers, and we would see that there should be 900 left. So there should be 900 numbers with three digits. Now let's see if we can come to the same conclusion using the fundamental counting principle. Looking at our three digit numbers, you might notice that the first digit is always a number from one through nine. In other words, zero is never a first digit in a three digit number. So we have all the options of digits, one, two, three, all the way up to nine. We have nine options for the first digit. So I'm gonna write the number nine here, not because I'm selecting the digit nine, but because I'm counting how many digits are possible. For the second digit, in numbers like 100, we are going to include the possibility of zero. So we have zero, one, two, three, all the way up to nine, or 10 digits possible for the second digit in our number. And for the third digit, we also have 10 possibilities, zero through nine. This does not, this is not affected by what we've chosen for any of the previous digits. So according to the fundamental counting principle, we can multiply these numbers together, and that would give us 900 three-digit numbers as we expected. Let's think about a different scenario where we're counting the number of odd three-digit numbers. So first of all, before we start, what does it mean to be an odd three-digit number? Well, if we list a couple of three-digit numbers like 542, 349, 475, you probably recognize that the first number I wrote is an even number. It contains an odd digit, but the only thing that matters when we're determining whether a number is divisible by two is that last digit, the third digit. This one is even, so the entire number is even. On the other hand, the number 349 is odd because the nine is odd, the third digit is odd, as well as the five in the 475. So when we talk about constructing an odd three-digit number, there's going to be a restriction on that third digit. Also, we can predict that we're going to have half as many odd three-digit numbers as the total number of three-digit numbers because half of those numbers are even and half are odd. So if we divide 900 by two, we would see that we should get 450 odd three-digit numbers. Let's see if we can come to the same conclusion using the fundamental counting principle. So which options do we have for our first digit? Well, we still can't use zero, so we're still gonna have the digits one through nine to choose from, nine possibilities. For the second digit, we're still allowed to use zero, and there are no other restrictions, so we have the digits zero through nine, or 10 digits to choose from. But for the third digit, since we're wanting to construct an odd three-digit number, we have to restrict ourselves to odd digits, one, three, five, seven, or nine. There are five of these. It doesn't matter which digits we chose for previous positions in the number either. So we can apply the fundamental counting principle. Nine times 10 times five is 450, as we expected. Now let's look at one more. Let's think about the scenario where we're constructing three-digit numbers and repetitions not allowed. This is different from the last two examples in which we could use the same digit twice within one number. For example, in this scenario, we're not gonna allow numbers like 559 because the five appears twice. So let's go through the process of breaking the task down into parts again. We're still not gonna allow zero for our first digit. So we still have the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Nine digits to choose from. But once we get to our second digit, 
we're not allowed to use whichever digit was used for the first. Let's pretend for a moment that the digit number, I don't know, seven was used. So that would mean that we can use zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, not seven, but eight or nine. One digit is missing from this list of 10 digits. So we have only nine choices. Now, does this value nine depend on what we chose for the previous digit? In other words, do we have uniformity or not? The answer is we do have uniformity. This number nine does not depend on the choice of the previous digit because Let's say instead of using seven, that we used eight. Well, that would just mean that we could use seven and we couldn't use eight and we'd still have nine possibilities. Now let's look at the third digit. For the third digit, we still have all the options, zero, one through nine, 10 options, but we can't use whatever digit we used for the second or for the first. Neither of those is allowed. And we know that they're different, so that means that there are two digits that are gone. So we have eight possibilities. So according to the fundamental counting principle, we can multiply nine times nine times eight. Let's see, that would be 81 times eight, which would be 648 different possible three digit numbers that are non-repeating. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please remember to like it. And also, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.